I'm glad you joined us today. We all need reminders uh, and to learn new things about what to look for as the online scams get more and more creative and um, more devious. Today, Police Chief Joe Swanson will give a presentation and we plan to have time for question and answers afterwards. I want to give a shout out of thanks to WCTV for recording this so that we can refer back to it because my senses will be learning a lot. And also I want to give thanks to Susie Stoltz for the energy behind um, getting this together. It's, it's, it's been a, a long time in planning and we're really glad that it's happening. So I hope we all learn how to remain safe online. Without further ado, Hey, good afternoon everyone, I'm Joe. As the screen says, I'm the chief of police and it's been about the last three months. <laughs> so according to the FTC, um, there's about 8.8 .8 billion uh, in online fraud every year. And um, everyday Americans lose great sums of money to scams and Woodstock residents are no exceptions. Recently, resident lost $4,000. Uh, so the different types of frauds, it's um, imposters, someone pretending to be charity, instead of a fake charity, um, after catastrophes, um, fake online websites, um, Prizes, sweepstakes, lotteries that are not real, they're email to you that you won. Um, when in fact, there's no, nothing behind it. And people offering uh, business services and job opportunities. If it's too good to be true, it's a scam. <laughs> What we're seeing a lot of now is generative AI. Um, it can be used to create images, um, voice likenesses of family members, um, and can mimic like speech and real sentences. Um, you'll see some scams that'll start with uh, telling you that your social security has been stolen or the virus has been detected. So click on this to remove the virus where the link is the virus. Um, at the bottom, a lot of web pages and um, you'll see sponsored stories. And each one of these is clickbait. Um, and each one of them offers a whole host of problems. Um, but clickbait is a term used to, uh, for an irresistible headline, something that you're too tempted not to click. So advertising is a form of scam that requires you to freely give up your information, such as your email address, credit card information, this is social engineering, and they hinge on tricking you into um, tricking you into the scam by offering you something that interests you, such as a Black Friday deal. Uh, so scammers like to use celebrity images. Uh, in their malvertising, it's a celebrity. If a celebrity is in the news, scammers will use their image, and people tend to trust these celebrities, and often they lead to sites that look legitimate with generative AI criminals um, can create sites that look like a real Forbes or the real Daily Mail, but are a mimic. They're not, not the, um, the real deal. Um, if you see a scam like this, that's not the real phone number. That's not a real virus um, or real tech support. So Woodstock resident lost money through a forced browser notification. 
um, and end up having to close their bank account Uh, it's a very common one claim you to have a virus. Uh, but don't believe it and don't call. If you have a pop-up blocker installed, um, there might be an X in the top right. You can close it. You can close out the pop-up. But a New Hampshire resident lost about a million dollars after receiving a pop-up alert advertising that she'd been hacked. A um, couple in Maine lost 1.1 million. Rhode Island woman lost 200,000 and a Massachusetts woman lost 200,000. Um, the FBI estimates that older adults have lost 588 million to tech support scams in 2022. So uh, all the sites sell your browsing data and scammers can buy a list of senior citizens um, for a very small amount of money. Once, if someone's successful, a scammer's successful and a person's fallen victim, that name gets sold to other scammers and they become tar they increase target. So this is how that social engineering works. The, the pop-up that we kind of showed earlier says urgent call, you call the 800 number, the person who answers has a solution to the problem that they've created for you. It's not a real problem with your real computer. Can I say something, Jeff? Yeah, please. Um, so social engineering um, scams are way up because a lot of sites now use um, malware detection software so they can't really get through to a lot of sites like the new york times and the big sites and so they're really leaning in on the social engineering meaning they get you to freely believe this scam and they can come on email they can come on your text they can come to pop up and it's just like if they say it's urgent don't believe them walk away the irs is not going to contact you through your email the social security administration is not going to send you a text so don't believe anyone who's so urgent. The sheriffs don't have a warrant for you. The U.S. Marshals don't have a warrant for you. These are all things that people come to check in with us. And if the U.S. Marshals are looking for you, you'll find out after they find you. Uh, so these software plugins are a relatively new tactic for scammers. They're malicious pop-up telling you to upgrade your browser and to, this, that the upgrade will give you a better experience. Um, so this is an example of a malicious extension or plugin. So the pop-up you install, the, the pop-up prompts you to install a plugin, but it will install spyware to steal your username passwords. Um, and these plugin ads appear um, all over the web. Oops, hold on, going the wrong way. So, uh, never install a plugin from a pop up. Um, it's a good idea to update your computer software, of course, but do it directly from the computer where you're looking. Um, in your system settings. Your computer will uh, alert you when it's time. Um, on a Mac, it'll usually be like the pop-up where the Mac operating software will show you a dialog in the top right to, up where, to, upload, to upload the update, <laughs> download the update. Um, in Windows, it's in the Windows Defender, Windows Update, um, kind of on like the, the power switch which I don't think I can get to on this screen without getting out of the PowerPoint, so I'm not gonna do that, but. Um, <laughs> well, you know, MacBook, you can click on the Apple icon in system settings and system update. So VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. 
Um, and VPN usage um, has grown over the pandemic as people have switched to online um, work and online socializing. Um, and it also helps you ac uh, circumvent digital access rights. So, um, if you live in Vermont, but want to access a British uh, Netflix, um, you can do that using a VPN and hiding your location. But if the VPN is offering you, it's free or low cost, you're the product, not the VPN. Um, so if you want to use a virtual private network, you want to find one by doing some research and looking for a, a company and a product that you are paying for, um, as opposed to it being free. Is that you agree with, Susan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, some tools of the fraudsters can be data, generative AI, uh, and programmatic, pro, pro, programmatic, thank you, um, advertising. So um, we've talked a bit about some of each of this. Generative AI is you know, the newest tool. Um, for a long time, but bad grammar was a dead giveaway that an ad or email is fraudulent. But with the, in, the improvement of technology, um, that bad grammar has become less noticeable. Um, and I mentioned earlier, generative AI can also be used to create a voice. Um, so a scammer can record someone's voicemail reading and create new speech that matches that voice print. Um, and so when it's used, uh, that AI generative voice will now be new sentences that are you know, typed in by the scammer, but will be an audi audible um, sound that is the new sentence that's being typed but spoken in the, the voice of the mimicked individual. Um, so mimic like a grandchild uh, calling and asking for help. Mm. But in reality, the grandchild is finding that college in class. Um, Joe, so what should alert you if you get a phone call where so, the, so the one voice of the is familiar? Is, you know, the, the, the family member is you know, in jail in Mexico, or, yeah. okay. and you need to send $50,000 cash by private courier. Um, okay. So you would want to then verify for yourself by hanging up, calling your grandchild, calling other family members that have been in contact with, you know, they're not traveling, you know. Uh, so you'd want to verify for yourself uh, that, that your family member is fine and not, not immediately respond to rescue them. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anything urgent, something is urgent, it's likely a scam. Yeah. There you go. So that was a generative, um, an artificial, inte artificial intelligence generated ad in Germany. <laughs> We're going to quick. Quick, we'll pass it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is an example of an email scam. There's a YouTube channel called Sca uh, Scammer Payback. Uh, this channel poses, this channel, the YouTube channel, poses as a victim and calls 800 numbers provided. Uh, you can see step by step how scams work um, and how the scammers trick people. Uh, do yourself a favor and watch these. One of them in particular um, is a, uh, like a NASA engineer who left engineering and got into payback and uh, some great videos on there. Um, where, where are those emails? YouTube. 
So there are videos on YouTube. Um, I think that my notes don't quite match yeah. the, uh, the slide, so just. There's an image of the YouTube channel. Coming up. Refund messages are huge. The, yeah. You know, people you get a, a refund a message email saying, just charge your credit card for your morning update subscription. You know, for three ninety nine, call us if you want a refund. And people call and they take you through this whole rigmarole, and that's what you'll see in the YouTube videos. They would, have, yeah. <laughs> so if you look. Is my pointer. So this is an email that someone received from Solar Savings, but if you look at the address, the email address, it's really hard to read, but it's just it's a series of random numbers and letters um, at a domain that isn't, you know, isn't sensical. It's set up to look like homeowners are installing for our homeowners are installing solar for nothing out of pocket, but it's not sent by a solar company, it's sent by a scammer looking for data that set up a website to look like, to look real. Uh, so if, you're, if you want to check to see, um, is an email coming from someone you know or not, look look at this part of the the email the header. Can I just jump in again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of like big Netflix and solar energy and stuff like that. And any legitimate brand is going to use its home its full name like acehardware.com. And every link in the email will include that see that bottom there's a when you hold, hover over a, a, a live link the URL will appear where Joe is pointing. And you should see acehardware.com. If you see ace1hardware or acehardware1.com, it's fake, it's fake, so you have to look. And another trick is every email will have, you know, the logo that's live, I think, you know, acehardware.com, it will have like the, uh, another link that takes you to the product that's offered. There's another link that says, uh, unsubscribe. When you hover over all of those links, that'll have a different URL. If you get an email and you're hovering over all the links and the, in that URL down below doesn't change, it's a scam. So that's a way of detecting whether or not something is a scam. When you say hover, you hold your cursor over? Like if the, if the red dot is the mouse and you would hover your mouse over. And then the URL will pop up and down it'll be below. different every time. It should be different. If it's not different, it's a scam. So if you look at the sender email address, uh, if East Hardware really sent this email, it would have the real URL in the email address. You'll see fake spellings of names. It, it might not be Netflix with a period after every letter. It might be Netflix with a one instead of an I, and the font is such that the one looks like an I. Um, or it'll be Microsoft with a plural instead of Microsoft singular. Um, this was a scam just sent yesterday. Um, if anybody's asking you to open a file through Google Docs or Google Sheets, it's a scam. Um, don't open it. If you're working on a project with someone and they're sending you a Google Doc, you'll, you'll know ahead of time because it's somebody you've been talking to, the project you're working on, um, some photos from vacation you're expecting. So uh, to protect yourself, you can use ad blockers. Um, you can use malware and virus detection. You can turn on spam blockers. Um, e most email 
Uh, providers will have that. If yours doesn't, you might want to consider getting a new one, but Google, Gmail, Microsoft, um, I'll have that. If you find yourself in a scam and someone is asking to take over your computer to control it remotely, you don't want to, um, you don't want to give access. Um, if your phone has settings to um, block robocalls, do that and um, just be suspicious and trust nothing. The CIA and NSA use ad blockers on their computers. Um, and Department of Homeland Security advises all companies with employee that work at home from home to recommend ad blockers on their you know, corporate computers and their work computers. Um, and during the last holiday season, the FBI advised that consumers to install ad blockers due to the rampant maladvertising. Uh, I, I use a ad blocker that's called Ghostry because I use I use Firefox on my work computer, and I was able to install that. So, so how would you find an ad blocker? Like, let's say, yep. uh, and the other thing is, is it the same on iPads and PCs? The answer is yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I yeah. The answer is going to be pretty much yes because anything that uses a browser. Um, I think it's on Chrome. I think it's here. The it's that setting. Um, you can click on, and if you're looking, you look for add-ons. The section, the setting that says add-ons, and you can search in there for pop-up blocker. I can't do it without. Um, after this, when I close out of this, I might be able to um, put it up on the screen. But I can't do it. I don't want to risk closing the presentation. <laughs> Ghostry is the one that they use, and the CIA and the NSA, they use Ad Blocker Plus. So just make sure you use a legitimate one because obviously scammers are yeah. putting them out too. But Ghostry and Ad Blocker Plus. Uh, so there are a lot of detection software available. Uh, so these are recommended by PC Magazine. There are others. Uh, some cost up to a few hundred dollars a year. Some computer operating systems, such as uh, Apple iOS, have good antivirus and malware detection built into them. And if you're easily overwhelmed installing software, you might want to ask someone you trust to help you. Um, so sneak at that person, and as this is important shield, the malware and virus detection are important shields for protecting your computer data and eventually your money. Um, ESET, we were using for a while, the state was recommending it, um, and Bitdefender I've used also in the past. What about Norton? I don't use Norton. It'll, people tell you that it'll slow down your computer, but it is legitimate. I tried to install Norton and I couldn't. It, it sent me a... You know, they sent you a code to, to get it going, and it said it expired, and I just lost confidence in them. And uh, you do a, a, Gorg, a Norton review. It is a legitimate, but people have a hard time installing yeah. it. I thought you, when I used you said it was pretty great. It didn't slow down my computer at all. Um, it was easy to manage. Oh, I think this is it. Yeah, I think this is So for email spam filters, if you receive a lot of spam, make sure your spam filter is activated. Um, and if your email doesn't have a spam filter, you could purchase one. However, it may be better just to switch to a modern email service that has one built in. Um, you can read the help files in your email, like from your service provider. And then you will have um, instructions for high level spam filters. Um, you can report spam um, when you click on I'm trying to think of how it is on Microsoft but you can click on um, delete and report for spam 
and that helps the IT at Microsoft or whoever the provider is to track trends and to track um, the emails that are out there. Uh, so, so don't trust the phone numbers um, in emails. The emails itself is a um, scam. This is not a real um, PayPal phone number. And a Woodstock resident at one time recently received an email from PayPal instructing her to call this um, to dispute a transaction when in fact PayPal never sent this um, and the phone number is not to PayPal. Right. Um, so the Woodstock resident Googled the 800 number uh, and found that it was a fraud. Um, so here um, you can see the this uh, 888-221-1161 is the search, is the, the number was searched. And scam and fraudster reported. Tom reported scam and fraudster from that phone number, meaning if that was the real PayPal, the Google search would have come up with like a PayPal website as one of the tops, top results. Um, instead, this person was clued into the fact that it was a scam by using this or by seeing this in the Google Google results. <coughs> I've, I've noticed a lot if I get a um, phone number, like a call from a phone number I don't I don't recognize, I'll Google that phone number, and this will you'll get this you know. Who's reporting this number? Um, and you can you can see who else is reporting it, or maybe you see that it's a legitimate um, customer service. So speaking of Norton and McPhee, you'll see a lot of um, this is your transaction. This is your refund. Um, for Amazon, Norton, um, you want to delete that. Um, you did delete any message from a. So that's a generative AI issue. There's a lot of data breaches, and so like Target, you know, they have the data breach. So the scammers now have your email address, and they know that you're a Target. So you can get a message from Target or, you know, saying, you know, you have a refund or whatever, and if you haven't bought anything, you don't know why they're giving you a refund, it's a scammer. You know, the, between generative AI and all this data they can buy, you're gonna receive a lot of emails that look really, that, that seem relevant to you because you are a Target customer and you, you know, do live in Vermont and you do, you know, use Dead River or whatever. You know, you're gonna receive, a, going forward, a lot of, really legitimate looking emails. And so if you, you know, if you receive a company saying that, you know, you've got a, a billing issue like your uh, electric company, um, just go ignore that email and go directly to your electric company and say, hey, do I have a billing issue? And don't yep. click on anything in an email from there. Uh, this, this one I see a lot where even to my to my work email I'll get something telling me uh, reset your password and I can quick, quickly see it's not sent from anyone in my organization. Um, uh, count cancellations are common. Surveys are ways that people will use to um, try to extract data from you. Um, so when scammers get you on the phone, they try very hard to get you to give them remote access to your computer. Uh, I mentioned this briefly a minute ago, but uh, they want you to agree. Uh, and they'll have you install software on your computer so they can access your computer. 
Um, but this is the guy um, spammer uh, spammer payback, and he tricks spammers, and he he will pose as somebody as an old lady because they do target the elderly, and um, and he'll expo he'll go through step by step how the scams work, um, and so it's a really good idea just to watch a couple of his videos so you understand yes. how the scams work. So if you search in YouTube for scammer payback, this should be one of your top top results. You can find one of the videos you that that you want to watch. Uh, this website on FCC's it's FCC.gov. We'll have instructions for how to block some incoming robocalls um, or ask Denel. Mm -hmm. um, don't be smart, be suspicious. Mm -hmm. um, suspicious will keep you safe. So we see an ad on a site that looks like it comes from a legitimate such site, such as Forbes, BBC, Mirror, uh, CBC, CBS, and others. Um, they'll be containing a fake finance-related article um, that refers to the story implied um, to in the ad and promotes a phony offer such as financial services, uh, cryptocurrency, stock exchange, trading, uh, with no real company or vendor behind it. These landing pages are built um, so that any clickable element on the on the leads to the leads the user um, to a deceptive offer page where they're asked to provide personal information and sometimes also credit card details in order to register for the service. Um, these will also contain these pages can contain fake comments um, suggesting that users are found the service or the um, information in the article reputable and valuable when in fact you know they're just generated comments they're they're not comments made by actual readers and users so this is a, a smart this image here it's a smart person wonders is bitcoin Champion legitimate. So they Google Bitcoin champion. Um, and these are the search results. Conclusion, Bitcoin champion is a reliable software and suitable for beginners as well as professionals. Um, and it looks like So going back to the Sorry. first one, it looks like a legitimate review, but that's actually yeah. a paid ad. A scammer took it out. That's not a real review. That's a, a Google ad. Yeah. So this looks like a legitimate search result, but in reality, um, it's a paid search ad, not a legitimate search search term. And really smart people have learned to look at the About Us site um, to see if the site, in this case, in, in this case, Index University Crypto is legitimate. Uh, many phony news sites skip this part of the website. Um, so a smart person knows to look, look here at the About Us part of the webpage. Um, and then a smart person Googles Jim Want, who's the founder and you know, CEO here, to see if it, he's written about crypto before to, to, to help determine if he's legitimate. So by clicking on About Us, they see the CEO of the company. And then looking up the CEO, that'll provide more in-depth um, information and clues as to whether or not it's legitimate. So Jim Wan is, a, is the founder of ETF.com and the ETF report. And that's what um, 
Can I just jump in? Yeah, yeah. please. Um, so we're all taught, you know, be smart. You want to invest in something, let's Google it. And the scammers know that. So they create these fake steps all the way through. And so you Google it, you see this fake um, ad, you, you know, it's from a, a website, you know, a news site. So you click on the news site. Generative AI has created all of these uh, articles. You think it looks legitimate. Then you say, okay, I know that fake sites don't have it about us. So you go there. And I've actually seen uh, ones where they've gone even a step further where they created fake LinkedIn profiles. So smart's not going to keep you safe. You know, if the CIA and the NSA and these people can't, you know, feel like they can't be safe from this stuff, you can't either. So when people say be smart, that's not true. <laughs> be suspicious. Don't believe anything. <laughs> so some final advice from the FTC. Uh, so only scammers will guarantee profits and big returns. Uh, no cryptocurrency is ever guaranteed to make money, let alone big money. Uh, nobody legitimate will require you to buy cryptocurrency. Um, and don't mix online dating and investment ad advice. If, if a new love interest wants to show you to invest in crypto um, or ask them to send you, for you to send them crypto, it's a scam. Um, if you want to learn more about crypto scams, the FTC website, ftc.gov slash cryptocurrency and ftc.gov slash scams. Um, visit those websites and to report scams, it's reportfraud.ftc.gov. So all, all scams should be reported to that? Yes. Yeah. So I get them all the time because I'm an artist and I have a website. I get one almost every day. And so I should send that email to report fraud? I mean, how do I, what do I do? You should, um, they only, um, uh, sorry, detection met methods and mitigation tools mm -hmm. can only be developed if people report. Right. So even if you're reporting every single time, you know, and if you are a victim of a scam, let's not police can't help you get your money back, but they can help get the word out that this is a scam. So you should always report, even if it's every day, report every day. I get. All of those emails, the examples that he did, I get every day, and I mm -hmm. report to Gmail. So you just have to report everything. To, to this website. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Now it's stopped. We're doing one slide left. <laughs> How do you copy and send it? Or do you just say forward to that? Yeah. And that's not going to open it? You're not going to have no. So, yeah, fear? I have to open them. And I do report phishing ah, okay. uh, with Gmail, and then they go that way. Okay. They go that way. Um, yeah. So just opening an email is not going to do harm. It's if you click on something in it. Yes. So opening it's OK, and then uh -huh. assessing it, and then calling it spam. That's right, and, um, and it was, goes back to what I said earlier, a lot of legitimate publishers now have these sort of sandboxes that test the ads before they, and emails before they are displayed, so that's why they're relying on social engineering, tricking you, right? So that's why, so generally, it is safe to open it and report it that way, but if you don't want to take any risks, just delete it right away, I mean, you're not, yeah. Yeah. you know, you can, when you see it in your inbox, you can hover your email, hover your cursor over the, the name and the two prompt, and then you'll see down below. If it's from Carrie Rosenthal, we'll see her email. If it's from somebody else, it's been spoofed. You can see that. You can just delete it right away if you want. So I opened up my phone just so I can do it in real time. And if I go on my email and I, um, click on is, is just like a promotional, there's three dots, and they can click report junk. Um, and it's going to be similar to doing it on the desktop. 
or an iPad. You can feel free to poke around on the desktop if you want to. I wasn't able, once I finish this slide, I'll. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want me to help, I can, but it's, it's feel free. Okay. Um, so some advice is to install an ad blocker, some antivirus software to keep your browser and system settings up to date. Um, don't trust urgent messages. Yeah, if it's urgent, it's a scam. Um, during the holiday season, election season, the, uh, when they're active, they're very active times for scammers and they'll use um, those op opportunities to steal your credentials. Uh, if you want to buy or donate, if you want to buy a product or donate um, to a campaign or to a to an individual, um, go directly to the store or go directly to the campaign site. Um, and so my closing thought is: don't be smart, be suspicious. If the NSA, CIA, FBI, and I could go on, um, HSI don't trust themselves to distinguish between real advertising and malvertising. Um, do you really think you can? I don't, I don't think I really, I'm sure that they could get me. So, to so just be suspicious. Uh, so that's the presentation. Do you have a question? Yes. I'm just trying to get his attention. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question? Yeah. I have two questions actually regarding okay. Facebook. Okay. One is, um, I'm wondering how safe it is because I have people who will maybe run for a cause like MS or Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and they want you to donate. I, I want to do that. I haven't had a problem, but is that safe or what do we look out for with that? It, the, the opportunity for it to be real is there. Um, but what do you, if, if a person you know is asking, um, for you to sponsor them for uh, a jump rope a bomb. You could ask them, you know, did you really post this on purpose? Uh, is this something that you vetted? Uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't click on one uh, without um, checking with that person. Okay. And then my second question is also about Facebook. Uh, when people say they're hacked on Facebook, which happens all the time, well, what do you do? What happens after that? I mean, do they, is there a danger? Can they, um, you know, access your financial information if they hack you on Facebook or what happens? You're talking about when people say, don't, don't accept friend requests from me, I've been hacked? Yes. Uh, don't accept the friend request. <laughs> um, I think also there's probably just some confusion where people may think they've been hacked. Um, they haven't. Um, but the, if you think you've been hacked, go through your own process to change your password, um, like your Facebook password. Um, Is that all? You just change your Facebook. So when, when people hack, when your friend is getting hacked, the scammer wants to know, learn about you. So yeah. if you allow your friends to see your contact information, your family, all that other kind of stuff, the scammer can, you know, if you select a, if you, Except a, a, a hack friend request, yeah. the scammer can then see you. Then they know a lot of information about you. And then they can target you and they can go to your email, they can send you email scams. It's not like you're going to get a virus from that Facebook hack, but they're going to know a lot more about you and they're going to use that information to send you even more targeted advertising and emails and Facebook um, things just to try and get, you know, get money out of you. So basically, you just don't accept any new friend requests. You don't have to delete them from your friend list. I, I, I go and I delete them from my yeah, you, active. You, do delete. you can choose the client friend request. If, if somebody's, if I'm already friends with someone and they send me a new one, I only need to be friends with them once. Um, I, don't, I don't accept the second one. Thank you. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can open. Okay. So let's see if we can get. There we go. So I think, so this is Google um, Chrome. And extensions, if you went to manage extensions, I don't want to do it because it's not my, my computer, but if you went to manage extensions. You can, you can, you can click on you that. Don't mind. 
Um, I don't, that's not, I don't think what I was looking for. Why don't I try? If you go to GoStreet.com, you can probably get a link, right? I'm going to see if I can. We have ESA on our machines here. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, we were, I was told at some point that with my extended family, we should have a code word or a code phrase so that if we get the urgent call, I was in a car accident and mm -hmm. I really need help, um, that there would be a way of, short of calling that person back, there would be a way of discerning whether it was really a person because of the voice AI generation that actually would sound like my niece or would sound like somebody that I knew. Is you that could, something you recommend? You could do it. Um, but depending on how many people have the code and where they're storing the code, and if their data got oh. was breached, um, so it's certainly a great idea. Um, I would just you can't trust you. I would just be careful <laughs> with um, how many how many people you're sharing any given code with. Um, but but it is. But there's no money involved in a car accident. Do you know what I mean? So if your niece is calling you about a car accident. You know, if you're in jail, there's money involved because you need bail. If you're kidnapped, you need ransom money. There's no money involved. It's like, help, I need a, a money to pay the ambulance. That's not going to happen. So the type of okay, it's not urgent the call. I mean, it's like we're not saying ignore all urgent calls if it's from your son. You know? Right, right. Um, but, you know, if you get like a voice, like I received a call. It was, you know, it's me, Alyssa, Melissa. My friend is Melissa. It sounded just like her. But I didn't believe it because it was very stilted, you know? I once, um, my father actually did something clever. He was, he got scammed quite a bit. And he got a call from someone saying it was his grandson and he needed money because this and such, he was in an accident and all of this. And so my dad started asking him questions. Oh, and, and he asked about his sister, Ashley. And then he asked about a non-existent sister, Mary. And when he answered, like he knew this non-existent sister, my dad knew that. So he just started talking falsehoods. Yeah. And if the guy went along with it, he knew it wasn't really his grandson. If you talk, if you give them real information, not only you're sharing real information, but they've done research on you. So they might know that what your real children and grandchildren's names are. Um, but if you make up a name, they'll, they might consider that they haven't come across that part of the research yet and go along with it. Oh, Joe? Yeah. Hey. Two, two things that happened, right? My sister got the, the grandson, um, the grandson, I'm in trouble, so, yep. uh, you know, accident, you know, stuff. And, and she said, my grandson, well, which one? And we kind of fumbled around just, you know, just scan. Yeah. And the other thing I thought was interesting, you know, in my high school, you know, we get together once in a while. Well, we're all older, you know, and somebody got a hold of the email list of all of us in the class of 1965. Yeah. And I got an email from us, somebody that was in my class, you know, and said, you know, can you do me a big favor? And I thought, I recognize the name. And I said, well, sure, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, just, just emailing them back and forth. Well, he wanted me to, it was, it was a friend of his that had a fatal disease and it was a birthday. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, uh, and when I do, when I get two those gift cards, cards you buy, you know, yeah. and, and send them to this other person, and I said, you know, if this person is sick, why does he want me to send $800 mm -hmm. to this person who's about ready to die? <laughs> but they didn't send, but I said, that's enough of that. Yes. Yeah, they'll they'll be targeting emails from someone that um, has your email because my email, my work email is publicly available. I've gotten them from other publicly available town and email employees, but they're not real town or police employees. They're someone that's used that name that they see online, created their own fake email address, 
with that name so it pops up like it's from Joe Swanson, but it's really not. Yeah. Um, asking to go buy a gift card or to, to um, do a fa whatever favor they, they want. So, so if, you, if you follow through and you look at the email address, not just the name of the person. Um, Another one that's common uh, seems to be the one that um, you'll get an email, like I get an email from you a lot <laughs> saying, here, I think I recognize you in these pictures. And then it has a link. Mm -hmm. virus. And it's a virus. Yeah. And it's from someone you know. And um, that's always a scam. Never click. Yeah, and if yeah. you have the opportunity, um, like for your online banking, to set up two-factor authentication, um, I definitely recommend that. It can be a hassle. Um, I think what Joe said earlier about contacting, did you really send this? Because I do that all the time. My friends do that to me. Did you really send me this link? Yeah. yeah. Or putting something in there that says, like, hi, Kevin, this is really me, or whatever, you know, something that recognizes, right. you know, how's right. Melissa, how's Toby, you know, and then, yeah. Was there any other, any other questions? Well, you about emails, but I have gotten um, texts, like, mm -hmm. from UPS saying that we couldn't deliver your package or whatever. And whether I'm expecting one or not, I just delete it, and they'll contact me again if yeah. they're real. And um, but most of the time, I just delete things. That's and, good. And text messages now also have the opportunity to delete and report. Yes. Yeah. So I, I do that. Um, do not let you block those incoming uh, mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so this is Fire Firefox. Um, so I clicked here on extensions and then I clicked over here um, and these are um, real ad blockers that Firefox has um, or real extensions that Firefox has a link to um, so ad blocker ultimate um, and because I'm going through the, fire, the Mozilla Firefox um, program. I know that this is the real, the real, the real link. It might be difficult to figure that yeah. out, but take the time because it, by the numbers, way more fraud is happening through advertising, malvertising than it is through email scams. So just take the time to do that. So if I were to make a mistake and click on something I shouldn't mm -hmm. and realize I probably have a virus on my machine, what do you do? I would take it to a store. Yeah. You would take it to a store? Yeah. And just say? Yeah, it? so you take you call a tech expert. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't know how to take them off. They're pretty yeah. complicated. Yeah, okay. Definitely don't recognize right away, just, just go along. Just disconnect. You know, just, there's a great grace period, right? I mean, about a minute or two. Yes. I mean, technology is pretty fast yeah. these days. So, I would, if you think you've clicked on something that's a virus, um, consulting, you know, an IT company that you that you use. Um, there's what Systems Plus, I think, and Lab Best Buy. Um, you can give them a call and set up an appointment. And you can disconnect if you um, are able to disconnect your device from the internet in the, in the interim. Any other questions? Well, thank you everyone for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you.